Corey, I know as we were setting up for the interview, you mentioned about uh, the last three years being much different in terms right. of uh, screenwriting and getting out there. Right. Can you talk about uh, some of those changes sure. and what's the current state yeah. of the market? And, and especially in TV writing where a lot of the action is. So if you go back 10 or 15 years and you ask yourself of all the scripts that are sold, let's put them into three different categories. We have paradigm driven scripts. We could also call these formula driven, rules driven. So these are scripts where like if you watch a, a, a bunch of three camera comedies, it's the same story structure, just different jokes. Or you watch a bunch of um, superhero movies over the summer, it's kind of the same story beats are happening at the same time. So these are formula or paradigm driven scripts. So that's one category of scripts that people can write and try to sell. Then there's imitative scripts. So when Breaking Bad was a phenomenal hit, everyone was writing their version of Breaking Bad. Or people would write their version of Arrested Development. So you'd read someone's script and you'd be like, oh, this is like Mad Men, but kind of different. And then the third kind of script is Pitch Perfect Authentic. And so that would be a script that, like when you read the pilot script for Orange is the New Black, it's not like anything you've ever seen. It's like Orange is the New Black. Love it, like it, hate it. It's completely original. Uh, we've never seen these characters. We've never seen this world. And the story is not formulaic. It doesn't hit these preordained plot points. It unfolds in a way that's most compelling for what Genji Cohen, the writer, is trying to communicate. Mad Men's another example. Community, uh, Sopranos, we could just go on and on. Uh, Moonlight. So these are scripts that don't follow a paradigm. They don't imitate what somebody else did. They're a wholly original piece of work original characters, story, and way of telling that story. So if we go back 12 or 15 years, on the TV market, who's buying Pitch Perfect Authentic scripts? HBO, Showtime, that's it. Everyone else is basically buying paradigm-driven shows, genre-driven shows, or a show that imitates a successful show. So if you wanted to break into the business 10 years ago, even seven years ago, you might follow a formula, you might follow a paradigm. Also, you're looking to get staffed on a TV show. So TV shows hire lots of writers. So if you want to be a comedy writer, you might write a, an episode of Jane the Virgin or an episode of Silicon Valley. If you're a drama writer, you'd write a version of a drama to prove that you could imitate a show. Everything's completely different now. So now when you ask yourself, who's buying Pitch Perfect Authentic scripts, HBO, Showtime, Netflix, Amazon, AMC, FX, and the networks basically everybody. And the reason is they're all chasing the key demographic, which is 18 to 49. And our generation, we've grown up on on-demand, video-demand platforms. So we've seen so many movies, we've seen so many TV shows. We know what's original and we know what is imitative. And by and large, our generation doesn't watch formula. And so basically the the key demographic wants something that's original, wants something that's new and different. And there's so much you can watch on TV, it really needs to be special to grab your attention and so you to be loyal. So people are loyal to Transparent, they're loyal to Game of Thrones, they're loyal to Jane the Virgin. And these are pitch perfect authentic shows. So I've read every script that has sold in the last three years and the vast majority are pitch perfect authentic scripts. Now, there are paradigm-driven scripts that sell, there are imitative scripts that sell, but the people who sell those are people who have a real serious track record in that genre. And what agents will always tell my classes is, if you have a standard follow the dots comedy or drama or procedural, unless you've been an executive producer or above, on a hit show in that space, in the last three years, your script's dead on arrival. No one will even read the script. Further, showrunners now, when they staff shows, they won't look at imitation scripts. They don't want to look at your version of a show. They want to read a Pitch Perfect original sh uh, script. And what they always tell my classes is, if you can write to a show, if you can imitate my voice, if you can follow a paradigm or a formula, that doesn't mean you're a great writer. If you're an amazingly great writer, you can ape my voice. You can follow how I tell my stories. So it's really heartbreaking because there's so many books and classes and seminars that probably made a lot of sense five years ago that are teaching people these paradigms or teaching people how to imitate and, and a set of rules that 
no longer applies. So it's like writers are being trained for a war that doesn't exist anymore. And just real quick in features, if you're going to work for the studios, you are going to be doing a Pixar film, a Star Wars film, or a um, Marvel action film. That's basically your three choices. And they, Pixar has a, a way they tell their stories. Marvel has a way they tell their stories. Star Wars has a way they tell their stories. But I have students, I just have a student who's got her first writing job at Pixar, but the script that she wrote was a pitch perfect authentic script. So even though when they hire her, they're going to expect her to write a Pixar script, you don't break in with a Pixar script. You don't break in imitating or following a formula. You break in with a script that when everyone reads it, they go, holy moly, who wrote this? I, this is amazing. This writer, I have to meet this writer. I have to be in business with this writer. So when you look at the writers who are writing all the features for the studios, they either have amazing track record of credits like Lawrence Kasdan or they wrote an amazing pitch perfect authentic script that no one had seen before blew people away and then marvel's like hey would you be interested in doing our you know whatever movie we're making and yes at that point when you got hired you're certainly going to write it the way marvel wants you to write it but the mistake i see is so many writers write their superhero scripts or their paint by the number scripts and they can't figure out why they can't get a career they're just simply writing the wrong kinds of scripts